Okay, all right. Kano, I swear to God, you're giving me, you're giving me... Don't do this. You're giving me answers today. Sure, we have an entire hour left, but still, why are you doing this? Is that Maria? Really, Maria? Tatana responded by removing the young woman's blindfold. Don't! Don't you dare say end of her story at me, game! There's no doubt about it. She looked very much like Hitomi Osawa. A surge of frustration rushed through Kano. Detective Tateno, what is the meaning of this? Kano fought to remain calm, but he felt like he was on the verge of falling to pieces. Bring me Hitomi Osawa and I'll let this girl go. Why? What do you need Hitomi for? But Tateno's only answer was an icy stare. It isn't like you. It's so weird. The Detective Tateno, who I know, who you know, Tateno cut him off. What do you know about me? I know what sort of detective you are, sir, because I've modeled myself after you for my whole career. The older man's expression remains stony. Don't you remember? Kano went on. That time when you risked your life to take talk down the man who barricaded himself inside that office? Ever since then, you've been my... Tateno interrupted him with a sudden burst of laughter. <laughs> you really are gullible, you know that? You can only see things the way you want to see them. What do you mean by that? The truth is, I didn't even care if I died doing what I did. That's why I doused myself in gasoline. Tateno's voice had gone low and quiet. There was no display of heroics. It was more attempted suicide than anything else. I wasn't thinking about the other people still inside the building. It's just a coincidence that turned out the way they did. So then, if you've made a single misstep, then everyone in that building might well be burned to death. You're lying! That can't be true! Kano shook his head insistently. I don't have time for this- I don't have time for this conversation. So Tano pressed the barrel of his gun to Maria's head. If you don't bring it, Tomi Osawa to me, believe me, I'll blow her brains out. Please stop this, Kano shouted, but there's no hesitation to Tano's eyes. It looked like he really would shoot Maria if Kano didn't do as he asked. Hurry up. Bring it home to me. Can't, uh, can't you at least tell me what's going on? Go now or so help me I'll shoot. Khan drew his own gun from his jacket. I know you, Detective Tateno. I know there's some meaning behind all this. Khan's words came out as important croak. You think you can shoot me? Tateno spat. Letting our car on go free, taking Maria hostage. This has to mean something. Sweat made Khan's hands slick where he clutched his gun. I asked if you think you can shoot me. I've always, look, I've always looked up to you. You were the sort of detective I wanted to become. Kano's view of Tatan had begun to blur as, as tears welled in his eyes. Can you shoot me, Kano? I can't. Even as he cried, Kano stood resolutely, doing his best to stare down the older man. He set his finger squarely on the trigger and pointed his gun to Tatan's forehead. Suddenly, the piercing stare vanished from the other detective's eyes. I've got to give you full marks for that, Kano. Tenno smiled thinly. I'll tell you then. I'll tell you why I'm doing this. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, it didn't give me a to-be-continued. Good. It all happened 17 years ago. A meth addict had assaulted someone in Shibuya. Tatana was questioning people around Dogenzaka in search of the perp. He happened to pass by Endo Electronics. Oh, hey, Tateno. Oh, it was Kotoni Endo, clad in pristine white. Clutched to her breast was her daughter, Suzune, only a few months old. It's been a long time, Kotoni said. Flashed a tiny, she flashed a tiny smile. Yes, it has, Tateno replied with a clumsy smile of his own. Are you on the job? Yes, I am. Kotoni recoiled slightly at the dour look in Tateno's face. Something the matter? There's an armed criminal hiding out somewhere in the area. What? I wouldn't leave the shop for a while, if you can avoid it. But I have to go to the bank to deposit some money. Surely you can have Daisuke go do it? He's away on a repair job and hasn't come back- He- uh, Sure you can have Daisuke go do it. He's away on a repair job and hasn't come back yet. 
Tina let out a one note sigh. Oh my gosh! The people in the photo with him are Achi's parents. The his his buddy who was always tinkering with stuff is Achi Endo, who made all those security cameras and stuff around town. But how the heck does that factor? Cause, oh, okay, okay, so Tateno... Tateno is obviously was in love with her. And Suzune has the heart condition, so did he try to engineer a bunch of this? So that he would get Hitomi to heal the daughter? Because, okay, where's this going? I see Daisuke still does things his own way. Alright, let me escort you to the bank. You mean it? I feel a lot safer having you with me. Katoni flashed him a smile, so why did Tateno thought he might lose himself in it? Yep, there it is. Tateno, Katoni, and Daisuke were childhood friends and got to school together through high school. Oh my god! Tateno and Daisuke were always clowning around together, and Katoni always, uh, was always there alongside them laughing. It had been quite some time since he'd gotten to walk along Dog and Zaka without Katone. Uh, with Katone. How have you been lately? Uh, have you been lately? Well, with a newborn to look after, it's been pretty hectic. But there's never a dull moment. Things have been good. I'm glad to hear it. Katoni was always as bright as a sunflower. Sometimes Tana managed to convince himself that just the sight of her was enough. Outside the bank, Katoni held Suzuni out to him. Tana received the baby with an anxious frown. What's with the face? I'm not good with babies. I haven't held one very often. Oh, you'll be fine. Don't worry. Just hold her for a minute while I take care of things inside. I wonder if the armed person is going to be in the bank. Uh, Alright. He held the baby gingerly. It was like a bomb that might explode at any moment. Uh, like like it was a bomb that might explode at any moment. Katoni chuckled softly. Suzune stirred and squirmed into Tenno's arms. She kind of has Katoni's eyes, he thought. It was strange, the sensation of holding a child. She was so soft and light, and yet such a real and responsive presence. The faint warmth of her body warmed to Tenno inwardly in turn. When Katoni returned, okay, good. There was the person was not in the bank. Returned after making her deposit, they strolled to a nearby park. Suzune back in her mother's arms. Do you have any plans for marriage to Tenno? Uh, to Tenno? I haven't thought about it. Work has me pretty bit plenty busy. Oh, that's just an excuse, Katoni said. If there really were some woman you wanted to marry, you wouldn't let work stop you. Then I suppose it's because there hasn't been anyone I felt that way about. Really? Nobody this whole time? Yeah, really. I see. But still, seeing the two of you like this, it makes me realize how nice having a family could be. Tenno peered deeply into Suzune's face. Well, well, if it ain't Tenno. He looked up as a cheery voice cut into the conversation. Who's Daisuke? What are you doing here? He asked his wife. I can ask you the same question. Come on, give me a break. I come to make the deposit for the client. Nope, wrong, wrong button again. In that case, no need to worry. I just take care of it myself. I thought you'd forgotten about it. Huh, really? Katoni smiled as Daisuke reached down and carefully lifted Suzuni in his arms. Beaming happily at his daughter, he nuzzled her up against her tangy cheek. Daisuke, long time no see. Yeah, glad you're doing well for yourself, Tateno. They walked side by side, Daisuke proudly showing off Suzune's drowsing face. So what do you think? Adorable, isn't she? Yeah, luckily she doesn't have your looks. Hey, now. Bad-mouthing me the same as ever, huh? Since <laughs> Something's hadn't changed since high school. Why not drop by our place for a bit, Daisuke offered. Uh, sorry, I'm in the middle of a job, actually. Tateno turned to glance at Katone. Oh! Instantly, Daisuke screamed, Katone! The man had come up behind his wife and now held a kitchen knife to her throat. Katoni stood stiffly, frozen in terror. Let her go! Tateno took a step toward the man, the slightly upturned eyes, close-cropped hair, the thin mustache, all the details matched the description. This had to be the man Tateno was after. Shut your damn mouth! You wanna try and kill me, huh? This lady here wants to try and kill me! The man was babbling nonsense. The reports have said the suspect was a tweaker. Right now his mind is probably a complete mess with m from meth withdrawal. Left unchecked, there was no telling what he might do. Tenno shoved Daisuke behind him and drew his gun from his jacket. Wait, don't shoot! You'll hit Katone! 
but Tatano had ignored Daisuke's shouts and trained his gun on the perp's shoulder. He was confident in his marksmanship. He'd never miss at this range. Tatano, please back down, Daisuke pleaded, Suzune still clutched in his arms. I beg you! I can't, Tateno hissed under his breath. This isn't someone we can reason with. The assailant began waving his knife about. He could stab it into Gatoni at any moment. I'm very afraid of this dude. Tateno had to take a shot now. He aimed for the shoulder of the arm the man held his knife in. Tateno, stop! Daisuke shouted, don't do this! For a brief moment, Tateno's eyes met Gatone's. He thought he saw her give a tiny nod. Don't shoot! No! It was all over in an instant. By the time Tateno had perp subdued, Katone's white shirt was soaked through with red. No! With Katone's death, so too died Tateno's heart. Whatever feelings had lived inside him had been reduced to cinders, leaving only a never-ending need to atone. Countless times he thought of ending his life in order to make things up to Daisuke and his children. The only reason he didn't go through with it was that he knew death would be the easy way out. And so he'd stayed on as a detective. He would carry the weight of his sins with him as long as he lived. This was the sentence Tateno gave himself. Fifteen years had passed since Katone's death. For the first time, Tateno had gone to visit her grave. He was standing by the grave marker with his hands clasped behind when someone called to, clasped when someone called out to him from behind. Um, excuse me. A slender young girl stood there, flowers in hand. Tateno instantly recognized her, Suzune. She looked just like Katoni had back in her high school days. Do you know my mother? She asked. Ah, uh, yes, we were classmates a long time ago. Oh, really? Thank you so much for coming. Suzune gave a slight bow, then gazed up at Tateno with her big, bright eyes. You, you look just like her. Tateno struggled to hold back the tears. He felt as if Katone stood before him returned to life. My father tells me the same thing all the time. I'm sure once you're all grown up, you'll be just as beautiful as she was. A forlorn smile came to Suzune's face. Once I'm grown up, well, I don't think that's going to happen. I guess I really do have a lot in common with my mother, including the part where I'm going to die young. Don't be ridiculous, Tateno exclaimed. Why would you say such a horrible thing? Suzanne took a step backward, looking shocked to be rebuked by a stranger. My apologies, he said hurry, uh, hurriedly. I didn't mean to startle you. No, it's all right, Suzanne murmured, clutching the flowers close. Honestly, it's not something I like to talk about myself, but I'm sick, so there's not really anything I can do to change it. Sick? I have a heart condition. A, gene a generic expression for illnesses pertaining to the heart, also referred to as heart disease including things like heart failure, uh, valvular heart disease, and so forth. The transplant is the only thing that can help me, but my blood type is a little bit weird, and it doesn't look like they'll be able to find me a compatible donor. The immune system exists to get rid of foreign substances in the body. Often a patient's immune system will attack a transplanted organ, which can result in the organ failing or functioning poorly. To mitigate the risk of rejection, it is preferable for the donor and the recipient to have matching body tissue. In the case of a heart transplant, characteristics such as blood type and pre-sensitized antibodies, human leukocyte antigens, must be screened ahead of time. Then, bowing her head, Suzune stepped in front of the gravestone and clasped, clasped her hands in silence. Tateno felt a wrenching pain inside him as if Katoni were being taken from him all over again. If there really was a god, why would he do such dreadful things? Is there nothing I can do? He nearly lamented out loud. I'll do anything. Suzune, I'll do whatever I have to in order to save you. Tateno clutched his fists as he stared at the grave. Tell me, Katone, what can I possibly do for your daughter? Please tell me. 
please. So he's perfectly willing to kill Hitomi, who has the same blood type, in order to save her, to atone for himself. And so the months rolled on. Everything changed just after 10 o'clock that morning. Tenno was on the stakeout when his cell phone rang. He glanced at the call display and saw Daisuke Ando's name. He hadn't heard from Daisuke in years now. Fearing that something had happened to Zune, Tenno answered the call despite his current tense circumstances. At once, he heard Daisuke wailing. Suzune had a seizure! She might not come back from this one! Tenno's terrible suspicions had been right on the mark. He felt himself growing weak. Please, Daisuke exclaimed. You need to shoot that girl you're with, that Hitomi Osawa! You need to shoot her in the head! If we have her heart, we can save Suzune! At first, Tenno couldn't make sense of what Daisuke was saying. Hurry up and shoot! Shoot her, please! Hitomi Osawa has the- uh, Hitomi Osawa has the Bombay blood type! Wait, hold on, Tenno said, keeping his voice low. You want me to kill Hitomi Osawa? So he's not connected to the... The whole everything here. This is an outside- outside reason. Quickly, why? Quickly scan the area. Daisuke, are you nearby? Wait, are you? Don't worry about that. If you can just render- uh, Daisuke, are you nearby? Wait, are you? Uh, where are you? Don't worry about that. If you can just render her brain dead, we'll be able to transplant her heart into Suzune. The term brain dead refers to a state where the entire brain, including the brain stem, is beyond any recovery. In Japan, brain death is defined by Article 6 in the Act on Organ Transplantation, which states that brain death can be only declared with the goal of authorizing a transplant. And is subject to the judgment of at least two doctors inspecting the patient according to preset process at least six hours apart. So was was Daisuke Endo responsible for the initial kidnapping attempt? Because they were supposed to get her the previous night, right? Excuse me. So it was supposed to be Hitomi last night, which is why he was saying earlier that like, hey, you're gonna get a brain dead kid tonight prep my daughter for surgery. Shooting someone in the head didn't necessarily guarantee they wind up brain dead. And even assuming it did, if Tateno shot the Osawa girl here in the middle of a scramble, it would cause a giant incident. By the time the autopsy was completed, the window for a heart transplant would surely have passed. Tateno, shoot her, please! Daisuke, I can't. You know I can't do that. Hurry! It was like his old friend wasn't even listening to him. Look, even if she did wind up brain dead, they wouldn't be able to perform a transplant. But Daisuke kept on shouting, It's fine, I'll be fine, I'll make the transplant work somehow. He'll make it work? Even knowing how ridiculous that was, part of Tateno wanted to know what he had in mind, if anything. I finally found it, I found something we can do for Suzune, please help me help her. Tateno understood Daisuke's feelings painfully well. To be helpless to stop the suffering of someone you loved, nothing in the world would hurt as much as that. I want to save Suzune. Tateno, this is the one thing I will ever ask of you. Tateno could hear choked weeping from the other end of the line. And at that sound, something inside him shifted. Yes. Yes, Daisuke was right. The likelihood of a transplant happening wasn't the issue. What mattered was that right now, he could take action. He could do something for Suzune. He mustered up his resolve, feeling the doubt lift from his heart. For Suzune the daughter of the woman he loved. Tateno checked the gun, tucked inside his jacket, then slowly began making his way through the crowd toward Hitomi. Everything is connected in this game. Oh my god, everything is connected in this game, which everything is connected. It's crazy, right? It still floors me, even though it's all should be connected. Now you know why we're here. Tateno gestured subtly with his gun, its barrel still pressed against Maria's temple. Kano's own gun wavered in his hands. He was crying inside. There was nothing else he wanted to hear from Tateno now, and now he was sure of one thing. Words were never going to stop this man. Kano, Tateno said. At my age, I've seen all sorts of young detectives come and go. He fixed his lonesome gaze on Kano. And you're about the worst of the lot. Whenever it's time to take action, you immediately do something reckless. Do you know how many formal apologies I've had to write because of you? Tateno let out a heavy sigh. But you know, Kano, 
because of the way you've looked up to me, you saved me. And that's the truth. You sound like a man speaking his last words. Now come on, see if you can stop me. Press the gun harder against Maria's temple. Kano took aim at his former hero's head. Detective Tateno. His finger wavered on the trigger. Shoot him. You have to shoot him. If you don't shoot him, Maria is going to die. He tried desperately to convince himself. I am going to stop you. Tateno looked him coldly in the eye. Do it then. Shoot me. Kano stared right back. He tightened his finger on the trigger. No! I'm so mad right now. We're coming up in the final hour. Scared about meeting with your father? Someone's broken through our firewall. I'm sorry, Mr. Mino. Oh my god, what's going on there? They lose everything. Nothing is. Achievement unlocked, running out of time. No! No! Give give back! Give give Maria back! You can't just take her off of the screen here! It's not even letting me cycle through! You can't do this to me! No! No! God. Do I want to finish this now? We've had a... We're at a three hour stream. Do I want to finish this now? Am I able to finish this now? Can I wait? Can I wait till another day? I can't. <laughs> we're gonna take a five, we're gonna take a few minute break. No, my back doesn't hurt right now. That's the main thing. We're gonna take a few minute break. I'm gonna, I'm gonna refill my tea. No, my tea is still good. I'm going to stretch my legs and we're gonna finish this game. So we'll be back in just a moment. Give me a bit. I need to yell on social media that we're still playing. I'm so, I'm so angry at this game. I 
I turned my fan up because I was starting to get heated up a little, so that should help with the uh, with my my uh, fatigue. I'm, I'm very worked up right now, and I don't know if I should try to cool down a little bit before we, before we continue, just to, just to chill, or, or I should just head, charge in guns a blazing. Man. Okay. All right. We're ready. We're ready. Drink. Delicious tea. <coughs> so, we're in the last hour of the game. Maria's story is over. Question mark, question mark, question mark. And we're heading no, we're not heading to you. We're heading- no, we're gonna start with you. We need to continue with Kano. But we're not, at the moment. And we're going to see where Osawa is instead. Because I am angry at myself. The rain won't let up. The sound is growing louder and louder inside my head. It is the sound of regret splattering against my heart. My emotions surge like a terrible storm within me. I never wished for this. Never expected my heart to be dragged so far beyond my control. We can't save Maria. We can't save Maria. We can't save Maria. The words stormed through Osawa's mind in a relentless cacophony. He called up images of the bodies from the human testing trials on his computer monitor. He couldn't help but imagine his daughter in the same gruesome state. In just a few more hours, Maria would begin hemorrhaging blood and die just like the people these pictures had. We can't save Maria. We can't save Maria. We can't save Maria. He couldn't shake the words of the reality from his mind. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Rosa began pounding his fist fiercely on the desktop. Sir, what are you doing? Kajiwara tried to intervene, but he kept on pounding away. When he finally ceased, the pain of the repeated impacts lingered in his hands. My research was never about any sincere desire to help people, and now I'm paying the price for that. The one time it finally matters, I can't even save my own daughter. Mr. Osawa. Kajiwara set a hand on his shoulder. You can always blame yourself later, but for now think again, good and hard. Is there really no other way to save Maria? Nothing else we could try? Why don't you give Maria a blood transplant from Hitomi? Sawa shook his head. The only means we had left was using Tanaka's password to unlock the doors. And now Tanaka's dead. There's no other way. Is there a possibility Mr. Tanaka had told someone else his password? There was, this was something Osawa hadn't considered. Was there anyone Tanaka might have shared his password with? Your wife! Only one person came to mind. Well, yes, there may be someone. You're referring to I, sir? Kajiwara cast his eyes down. You figured that out then? Yes, back during the commotion over that listening device. A necktie clip isn't typically the sort of present one gives to one's husband's co-worker. And yet, although some might consider it somewhat uh, inappropriate, Mr. Tanaka was wearing it as if it were a matter of course. Which uh, implies something about their relationship. Kajiwara 
Kajwara's voice trailed off. He coughed apologetically and tried again. I realize it's an awkward situation, sir, but please check with your wife. Even if I does happen to know the password, that does us no good if Maria gets quarantined someplace we can't reach her. I understand, Mr. Osawa. I'll bring Maria to you, then. I'll do everything in my power to make that happen. Where did you get that? The detective then produced a bunch of bananas from his pocket. He, he had two. He had two and two chocolate bars before. How does he now have a whole bunch? These are all left over. You are more than welcome to them, sir. Despite his gentle smile, the rest of his face was firm with resolve. How, how the actual heck do you have all those bananas? I'm sorry, I'm projecting onto you because I'm angry. I'm angry at Teteno, and I'm yelling at you, and I apologize. Hello, Jacket, by the way. You said you didn't care whether other people understood you, didn't you, Mr. Osawa? Osawa nodded guardedly. At the risk of being presumptuous, sir, I understand you, Kajiwara said. I used to be quite the workaholic myself. You are just like me, innocent and awkward. On another occasion, Kajiwara was shocked to run into a man who looked just like him. The fellow was a stylist at a hair salon Kajiwara visits on occasion. He let out a gasp of surprise of his own upon seeing the detective. Kajiwara felt a peculiar connection and was expecting to go to the salon regularly, but when the stylist asked what he did for a living, and Kajiwara answered honestly that he was a detective, the other man's face went pale and he bolted out of the building. <laughs> Kajiwara never saw the man again after that. Oh. Healthy pocket bananas. Yeah, apparently his his he just has a pocket dimension. Imagine all the banana bread I can make with that. I think my mom actually just made banana bread this morning. And now I want some. It's downstairs. It's waiting for me. Calling yourself innocent, huh? How modest of you. Kajiwara let out a sardonic chuckle, and after a moment, Kajiwara joined in. I may have been lurking for the past couple of hours, so I'll say, uh, before I get back to work. What the heck? Right? He's Donkey Kong. He stores it in his tie. <laughs> Evil monkey. Well, I appreciate you watching, Jacket. Thank you very much. The next time I see you, Mr. Osawa, I'll have Maria with me. Now I want to make banana bread. Everyone needs to make, make banana bread right now. The detective gave a slight bow, then left the study, a look of determination on his face. <laughs> Sal watched him go with admiration. No matter what trouble arose, the man always looked for something he could do. He really was a fellow who knew how to hang tough. Compared to that... I'm just... Osawa couldn't even articulate his own self-disgust. And asking I about the password would also mean inquiring into her relationship with Tanaka. The prospect is daunting. Venturing into the emotional territory of another person was his weakest suit. Mandaray pancakes. He left his study, but somehow find himself making his way to Maria's room, not I's. He realized that he hadn't been into his daughter's room since a certain rainy day years before. Now he stepped quietly inside and saw Maria's world laid out before him. A small photo was set atop her neat and tidy desk. It was a close-up of someone's hands doing a cat's cradle. Whose hands were they? From the skin tone, they didn't appear to be Maria's. It's a pancake in the shape of a manta ray. I want that. I want that right now. <laughs> Several more photographs are pinned to a corkboard that hung on the wall. They were snapshots of people and townscapes from the Middle East. One glance at them, Osawa felt like he was back there for back there for a moment. The images weren't necessarily aesthetically pleasing, but they all looked like they'd been taken by a professional. When he spotted the last photo on the corkboard, however, he was certain that Maria had taken them all. It's him. The last picture was of Osawa himself. He was facing the camera, holding some luggage and flashing an awkward smile. It was a comical, affectionate image. He'd never known that photography was one of his daughter's hobbies. No, this went beyond a mere hobby. Did she perhaps aspire to be a professional photographer one day? A steak in the shape of Mittaton's face. Hello, Midnight. How are you doing today? A burger in the shape of Kirby. I want that too. He'd never known the... Uh, uh, da, 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 da. She has certainly had the aptitude for it from the look of things. Maria, a photographer. As he mulled the idea over, Osao felt his chest tighten. Right now, it looked like Maria's hopes and dreams were about to be snuffed out. See, first he mentioned Mediton, and now he mentioned hopes and dreams. Her future consists of bleeding to death a few short hours from now. 
It's Makoto's birthday, so I've been celebrating accordingly. Happy birthday, Makoto. It's always a good day when it's the birthday of a Makoto. Asawa stared vacantly out the window. The view from Maria's room remained unchanged from so long ago. Again, that rainy day crept back into his mind as vivid as the present. We'll pretend that that Makoto drawing I did a couple weeks ago was, was for her birthday. <laughs> On that day, Osao was dealing with some pressing business from work. He'd ensconced himself in his study, wrestling with some paperwork when Otomi barged in, looking distraught. Maria's gone! Sensing that Otomi was legitimately alarmed, Osawa hurried to Maria's room. He found a letter she'd left atop a writing desk. Dad, you only care about Hitomi. You're always working and never do anything with me, so I'm running away. A few hours earlier, he'd canceled their weekend trip to the amusement park. He wasn't just gonna be able to get his he just wasn't gonna be able to get his work done in time. Hitomi had resigned herself readily enough, but Maria just couldn't accept it. She'd been looking forward to it for so long, she railed at him. How many times now had he broken one of his promises to her? Hitomi understands why we can't go. So why can't you do the same? The cold rebuke had ended her complaining, but it was clear she didn't still didn't accept the situation. Now Hitomi helped him look around, but they found nothing missing from Maria's room. Despite her assertion that she was running away, then it seemed like there was no point in being overly concerned. Maybe she's at the park she always goes to? Uh, Hitomi looked worried. The park was roughly a 20 minute walk from the house. It would take only an hour for Osawa to go get her bring her home. But an hour was more than he could afford to spare right now. Dad, I think she's waiting for you to go after her. <clears throat> Osawa didn't need Hitomi to tell him that. He knew it well enough. That was what galled him so much about the situation. Why'd she have to pull something like this precisely when his work was at its busiest? He'd done everything he could as a father since his wife had passed away. Why couldn't his daughter see that? It's alright. Your sister will come back. The rain was coming down pretty hard outside the window. Do, do you think she brought an umbrella? Hitomi asked anxiously. I don't know, but with the rain like this, she'll come back home soon enough. He spoke the words for himself as much as for Hitomi. He then head back to his study and got back to work. So sorry if you can hear my fan in the background, I just had to turn it up a little. It's just making It makes clicky noises when it's at full blast. Several hours went by and still Maria did not return. The rain had gotten even more intense to the point where Osawa could hear it in his study. He was so concerned about missing girl that he couldn't focus on his work, but he stubbornly refused to give in and go search for her. Several more hours passed. At last Maria appeared at the front door soaking wet. Saw met her silently in the entryway. Wet strands of hair clung to the girl's forehead as she looked up at her father with a bitter glare. You don't care what happens to me, do you? Yeah, we saw this we saw this scene a little earlier also. Immediately Osawa smacked her across the cheek with the flat of his hand. It was the first time in his life he'd ever struck anyone. He had known such a violent impulse could exist inside him. Maria stood there, her hand pressed to her cheek. Tears welled up in her eyes. She began to tremble. On her lip was a small bead of blood. A flood of guilt and regret rose up inside Osawa, as if he just shattered some intricate piece of glasswork. How... how could I do such a thing? He clenched his shameful hand into a fist. In that moment, he was afraid of Maria. Afraid that his daughter could bring such a raw emotion out of him and make him do something so thoughtless. Even more, he was afraid of how stunted he was as a human being. Was someone like him really fit to be a parent? What kind of future could Maria and Hitomi hope for with a father like him? That was why he'd married Ai, as Makino had proposed. Having a mother, he decided, would help keep his family together despite their sad excuse for a father. But in so doing, Osawa had dug a psychological ditch between himself and his daughters. Man! A deep ditch so that he could keep his daughters from being hurt. Man! So that he wouldn't hurt himself. Man! See how that turned out. Don't push people away. It won't actually help them. Now Sal was staring across that ditch, wondering if it was too wide to leap. He thought back to his earlier exchange. If you get angry, you show it. If you get sad, you show it. It's human nature to let other people know how we're feeling, after all. But what if doing that hurts the other person? 
That's when you apologize, sir. Yes, that was right. He needed to apologize to Maria for what he'd done that day. It still wasn't too late. It's never too late. When it comes to family, there's no such thing as game over. He recalled Pretty Honey's words. He needed to apologize to Maria, and so he needed to ask I for that password. Saw was going to have to face his wife. Man! Okay, fine. We'll go back to Kano now. <laughs>